Hello, David Cowboy Bruffy fans. Uh, I'd like to thank you for joining us tonight for a little bit different video. I like to call the power of prayer. Uh, let's just say I like to welcome y'all tonight. It's a little bit different video than what y'all are accustomed to, but when you get filled with the Spirit and the Lord talks to you, let's just say you uh, put the pieces together and you either roll with it or you just brush it off your shoulder and say it could be the anchovies or something else talking to you but uh... welcome Cowboy Bruffy fans to this uh... video uh, I like to make a disclaimer before I start I'm not a preacher, but uh, like I say, when you get filled with the Spirit and He starts talking to you, you start uh, writing things down on paper and putting the pieces together and the power of prayer, it comes. To me I kept on seeing things on social media about pray for us we need healing pray for this situation pray for that situation bless me with this and that and the other but uh, like I say disclaimer I'm not a preacher and as many of y'all can tell on social media and YouTube and whatnot, I'm usually behind the camera shooting either concert videos, footage, concert uh, photos, or as uh, I get inspired to I, I sing a few songs for you but anyway I like to thank you for joining us here tonight for video I like to call the power of prayer but uh, like I say disclaimer I'm not uh, a preacher maybe someday hopefully the uh, preacher blood it it runs in the family I had uh, one of the uh, great grandpas Mark James Bruffy he used to be a Methodist preacher and somewhere down the line you had uh, George Washington Bruffy he used to be a preacher uh, Methodists maybe but uh, I don't know what exactly they used to preach but uh, I take inspiration from some of the uh, preachers that are around and those who have gone before us you got the greats like uh, Gary O'Shale, Gary Smith, you got Stephen Willis, then there's uh, Jim Alley, Pastor Larry Brody, you got uh, Cousin Benny Burks, 
he's a preacher. Then you have uh, John Hagee and some people frown upon Jerry Falwell, but you can learn a lot from him. Then you got the uh, legends like uh, Billy Graham. And then there's Franklin Graham. The list, it goes on and on, but yeah, you could pull inspiration from a lot of people. But uh, I'd like to welcome you to this power prayer video. And hopefully somewhere out there it'll help somebody where needs helping. But uh, I guess uh, we'll open up and say welcome. Grab a good old fashioned bottle of water or something cold to drink. Or grab you a snack if you want to. Feel free to take notes or what all. And, but hey, if nothing else, you've seen the first couple minutes of this video and said, hey, it's just the ramblings of a mad cowboy. Hey, just feel free. Say a prayer and click a button and find something else to watch if you want to but but anyway I like to welcome you to the power of prayer video and before we get started I uh, I guess I open up with a word of prayer but uh, let's see what we can do here Heavenly Father thank you for this night thank you for this time thank you for the words that we could share with somebody who may be in need of hearing tonight and just use this video to the glory of your power and just be with somebody who may need to hear the words. But anyway, thank you for the, everything you've given, everything you will do. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. The power a prayer it's the foundation of the Christian life as important as going to church prayer is a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God prayer it builds relationships with God. Think of it as you trying to build a relationship with a co-worker or think of it as you trying to build a relationship with someone you're trying to date or possibly get married to think of how you built a relationship with someone you love imagine going out on a date with the man or the woman And uh, imagine a date full of conversation, memories made, and time share, the laughs, the eye contact, maybe y'all touched each other's hand or whatnot, but how the night end up with the date 
with you and them in conversation together. And then take scenario number two. Imagine going out on another date with someone, either a guy or girl, someone you're trying to build a relationship with. Imagine that either one or both of you or either just on the date and not talking to each other or one or both of y'all are playing on your cell phones not paying attention how did that date end for you? Was it uh, as good? Was it worse as the uh, first one you went on when you was talking? Prayer, it builds a relationship. It's one on one conversation. But uh, think of it. as God is your boss and think of how your boss likes to check in on you they they usually check in and say hey cowboy how is uh, work going is there anything to report how far are you along on your to-do list? But think of prayer as checking in with the balls. Uh, they, they usually the boss usually likes to check in with you. We read. In Second Chronicles 7.14 through 15 If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and will heal their land. As uh, Christians and people of the faith, we need to plug in to the power of prayer. As uh, Christians, we need to plug in to God's power and pray. Imagine praying, saying, Dear God, help me win the lottery. But the catch is, how can whoever prays, God, help me win the lottery? win the lottery unless you play a scratch ticket or select numbers to to win let's just say for example you pray dear god help me to dig his hole help me to have a hole dug 
the thing is, you need to grab a shovel and start digging before a hole gets dug. We need to plug in to God's power of prayer because without God's power, it's like a lamp. The lamp, you could turn it on and off all you want. As Christians, without God's power, we're like lamps. We we can pray and hit a switch all we want, and it doesn't turn on. But as Christians. or people of faith, we plug into God's power and He works. He intercedes. John uh, 17 9 says I pray for them I am not praying for the world but for those you have given me for they are yours when we have the power of God's power through prayer He uh, intercedes for His people, and when we pray, we must first praise God and be thankful for the blessings that He has given to us. Two, we have to repent for the sins and that which God doesn't like and the things that we've gotten wrong day to day and we've wronged God with we need to ask God what is on our minds and troubling us. We need to yield to God's voice. Set and listen to what God wants us to do and to God's will. Prayer, the word prayer or variation of it, it's mentioned about 300, 700 times in the Bible, depending on how you look at it. The variation of the word Romans 12:12 12, 12 tells us to be joyful in hope patient, affliction, faithful in prayer, affiliation, faithful in prayer.
Psalms 110.1 tells us, The Lord says to my Lord, Set at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. The Lord, He sits at the right hand of the Father. And He uh, intercedes with God to answer the prayers we pray. Colossians 4.12 says, uh, Ephraim, who is one of you and his servant, of Jesus Christ sends greetings. He is always wrestling in prayer for you, that you may stand firm in all the will of God, mature and fully assured. What that verse is saying, this is uh, from the uh, letters written to the Colossians. He's uh, saying that God, Jesus, He's sitting at the right hand of the Father. And whatever you pray, Jesus, He's interceding. He's cheering for you. He's uh, helping to get things worked according to the plan. Prayer, it's a powerful weapon against Satan and his demons. Colossians 2.15 tells us, and having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Luke 1.37 tells us, For no word from God will ever fail. God, he, he moves mountains and he parts the seas and nothing is impossible. He works miracles then in the times before in the times when Jesus was around. And he worked miracles in the time after Jesus and he still works miracles through prayer Mark 11 24 it tells us therefore I tell you whatever you ask for in prayer believe that you have received it and it will be yours Luke 11.9 tells us, So I say to you, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. Jeremiah tells us, in Jeremiah 29 12 then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you we pray for a loved one rather that's a friend 
family member, someone who is close to us like a brother. But uh, we pray for a loved one who's been in the hospital from either a car crash or somehow caught some kind of sickness. But we pray for that loved one who's in the hospital. You pray, please Lord, heal so-and-so. Help them to get well and to come home. You pray for healing for that person for days and then you halfway see a fluctuation they're getting better they crash and uh, their health starts declining but then they start getting better again and you think your prayers are, are answered and all of a sudden the person dies Now, you prayed for healing for the person. And you start asking yourself, hey, God, what happened? Why didn't you heal so and so? They was getting better and then their health declined and they got better again what what happened although your prayers here on earth wasn't answered you prayed Lord heal so and so make my friend make my family member get better now although it wasn't the answer you was looking for and whoever you prayed for healing for didn't get healed here on earth but they died it was still an answer to your prayer because if that person was a Christian they are in heaven and Revelation 21 4 tells us he will wipe every tear from the eyes and there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things have passed away Although you prayed days, nights, weeks, Lord, heal so-and-so, make them feel better. And they died, your prayers was answered if they was a Christian. They may not be here whole and healed from whatever put them in the hospital but they are whole and healed in heaven if they was a Christian
prayer. It can heal. Like I was saying, if you, you pray for healing from a loved one, and they die, and they go to heaven, if they're a Christian, the power of prayer, it can heal the sick. The power of prayer, it fights battles. The battle with Satan and the battle with addictions we have. Prayer. With a humble heart and if we pray with God's power can work through whatever we're facing. Jesus, even He went out by Himself to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with the Father and with God and many a times in the Bible you see him sneaking off and getting by himself and, and praying Luke there are times we even see Jesus sneak away at night time and get off alone by himself in the daytime go off into the wilderness alone to pray to the Father and to pray to God but uh, Luke 6.12 tells us one of those days Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spend the night praying to God. Mark 135 tells us very early in the morning while it was still dark Jesus got up left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Luke 5.16 tells us, But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. And then you have Luke 22.44 that one time he went off to pray by himself before the soldiers come and he, he, he was feeling it that night now we may sweat as humans and we may bleed if we get cut or hurt or whatnot but have you ever seen anyone sweat blood that night when Jesus went out to pray by himself Luke 22 44 tells us and being in agonish, he prayed more earning, earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. There are often times 
throughout the Bible, the New Testament, that the uh, apostles, disciples, they uh, ask Jesus, hey, teach us to pray. Teach us what you know. Teach us how to build one-on-one -on -one relationships through the power of prayer. Luke 11, 2 through 4, tells us. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be the name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us of our sins and for we also forgive everyone who sins against us and lead us not into temptation. One of the main lessons of prayer we see from where the disciples asked Jesus teach us to pray is what is known as the Lord's Prayer that comes from Matthew 6 verses 9 through 13 where Jesus is teaching and he says this then is how you should pray our Father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us of our debts as we also forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. Even in those days, the disciples knew about the power of prayer and how the power of prayer can change things. Prayer, it saves lives. Prayer is the most powerful weapon in our arsenal against Satan and the demons. Prayer, it can heal depressions. Prayer, it can heal anxiety. Prayer, it heals. Now, some of those people in my inner circle know that the story behind Cowboy, when I say prayer heals, I've been depressed and some may have seen me in that dark place nobody wants to be in. I may have had some suicidal tendencies but with prayer and a group of positive people you call a circle surrounding you 
you you have God's help through the prayer and if you start feeling going down that dark trail no one wants you to go you you reach out to one of the ones in your circle and say hey so and so I'm tempted to run a truck off the side of the road and hope it takes me out I'm in a better place if it does or you get to thinking hey you take this amount of pills and things uh, be good but through the power of prayer and a positivity group someone you can share things with it it helps but uh, there's power in prayer prayer it it heals prayer you have Jesus on the right side interceding for you the power of prayer it's an amazing thing to have and prayer they can also save your life but uh, if you have any questions have any prayer requests write them in the uh, comment section shoot me a DM, shoot me one of them DMs direct messages or whatever and say hey cowboy this is what's going on. Can you help me through it? The Bible says where two or more are gathered. It's a whole lot better than facing trials, things of life alone. But uh, I just want to thank you for sitting around and listening to a crazy man ramble on and on. You say, hey, cowboy, get off my TV now. Cowboy, what in the world was that? But hey. I say, I'm here for you. If you need an ear to listen or shoulder to lean on, just uh, put a comment in the comment section or shoot me a DM, direct message. But, uh, Maybe we'll have some more videos almost like this in a way later on down the line. But uh, I just want to thank you for watching. I want to thank those who are in the circle you know who you are I know of at least maybe two or three of you left that I might be able to count on 
Yeah, you 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 know who you are. I know it's uh, a couple of them that either went this way or that way, but I'm sure they're still around somewhere. But just want to thank you for watching and thank you for listening to Cowboys Mad Ramblings and thank you and God bless.